Hello and welcome to Unlock series. This is Dr. Nisha Matthew here to explain the poem On Children by Khalil Gibran. Before moving on to the poem, let's analyze the details of Khalil Gibran. Let's take a quick look at who Khalil Gibran was and his relevance in the field of literature. Now, Khalil Gibran was a painter and a poet who wrote his major works in English. He was basically a painter. He lived mostly in the US, even though he was born in a place called Lebanon. And Khalil Gibran is considered to be a key figure of a romantic movement that transformed Arabic literature in the late 19th century. Arabic literature, as we know, is very rigid in its use of rules and the principles followed by the writers. It was difficult for an ordinary writer to relish or to get the taste of Arabic literature in all its essence. So here we have Khalil Gibran who wrote in Arabic as well as in English and his style was extremely simple and lucid. He was also a part of a romantic movement and he carried lot of romantic ideologies and philosophies about life. As a, a beginner, he used to contribute pieces of poems as well as short stories to Arabic newspapers. And those pieces of literary texts or those pieces or those articles were mostly about the experiences and loneliness of immigrants in the new world. And Gibran, as I told you, wrote in a very free and lucid style as opposed to the rigid and, Arab and difficult Arabic poetry that was already mentioned before. And his major themes included alienation, disruption, the lost rural beauty and also the loss of security in a world that was becoming extremely modern in nature. And the works that were produced by Khalil Gibran were received with mixed responses from the part of the readers and the critics. The ordinary readers were highly appreciative of Khalil Gibran while the critics dismissed him off as being extremely simple in nature. And as I mentioned in the initial part of the lecture, Khalil Gibran was also a painter and he painted in the tradition of symbolism and art nouveau which was actually rejected by the American realist and the European abstractionist. One of his most popular works to date is The Prophet. As I, I told you before, it was accepted uh, by the reading public but it was not appreciated by the critics who always favored writers like James Joyce and T.S. Eliot and he was dismissed off as a sentimentalist. He was highly romantic at heart. He was romantic in his philosophies and was romantic in his writing and he used to be dismissed off by the critics as a sentimentalist and uh, also by the historians of art and literature. And the poetic output or the products of Khalil Gibran, the out literary output of Khalil Gibran was extremely romantic and you can come across the influence of the Bible, Frederick Nietzsche and also of William Blake in his writings. And to go into the depths of his life, he was born in northern part of Lebanon, which was the Ottoman Syria, which was then uh, referred to as Ottoman Syria. And he was born in a Maronite Christian family. His mother was Camila Jubran and his father was Khalil Said Jubran, who was a gambler and a drunkard. He was basically a good officer, but uh, he had the habit of gambling and he was also a bad drunkard. And he portrayed his life in Lebanon as idyllic. He was basically romantic in nature and he was also uh, very romantic in his writings. And now we understand from where he got his romantic nature. He always considered or he looked at Lebanon as a place of idyllic beauty. And he always infused Lebanese folk culture in his works. Even after shifting to the US, you come across the influence of Lebanon in his writings because it is uh, in Lebanon that he uh, found nature, the beauty of nature, which he tried to infuse in his works. And you can also come across the influence of Lebanese folk culture in his works. And Camila, 
She left for US with her children in 1895 because of the arrogance of her husband. Her husband Khalil Said Jibran was a gambler. He was a drunkard and he never took care of the family. So Kamila had no other way but to leave the place. So she left for the US with her children in 1895 as a part of a wave of immigration which took place before World War 1. and in in the us they settled in boston where camila opened a shop in order to uh, find a means of living and jibran was given american education he was sent to an american school from where he received his education and he also became proficient in using english language a path breaking uh, move took place in 1896 when Khalil Gibran met Fred Holland Day who was an avant-garde painter. He was the leader of a Boston avant-garde group called the Visionists and uh, they were basically imitators of British decadence and the pre-Raphaelites and he became very close uh, friends with Khalil Gibran and he used the boy uh, Khalil Gibran as a boy was used as a model and he was also introduced to romantic literature and also helped Khalil Gibran to uh, establish himself as a painter and this man Holland day he groomed Khalil Gibran to a great extent he used to read him from literary texts which helped Khalil Gibran to improve his english he used to lend him books and also directed him to new boston public library and the uh, holland day and his friends they were able to convince gibran of the artistic calling that he had within so it is actually to uh, fred holland day that Khalil Gibran is greatly indebted indebted for showing him what his talents were and however Camila uh, Gibran was quite uh, apprehensive about Khalil Gibran's friendship with these people because they were extremely modern in their attitude and uh, they were also avant-garde painters they had lot of uh, uh, friendship with uh, friendship with women and that actually created a fear in the mind of Camila such that she sent him back to Lebanon Khalil Gibran went back to Lebanon in order to complete his education as was instructed by his mother and it was in Beirut that he published the work the broken wings the broken wings is actually the english title it was basically published in arab arabic and later translated into english as the broken wings and another important uh, episode in Khalil Gibran's life is is his platonic love with this woman called Josephine Preston Peabody and she used to call him as the prophet and this title or this usage prophet became the title of his book later he brought out the work called the prophet and there was another woman Mary Haskell who was Gibran's patron she was a major influence on khalil gibran they used to exchange letters as well so she was also someone who preserved the sketches of gibran in detailed journals so their letters and journals they are seen as uh, you know they are seen as uh, a document of gibran's literary legacy Khalil Gibran was also very active in Syrian nationalist circles during World War 1. He had his own policies, he had his own political views which he contributed and he helped the members of Syria in the US. Uh, he helped them um, get over the starvation and famine that they were suffering during the time. and he was also an advisory member of the seven arts along with robert frost and it is uh, through his contributions to this particular journal or magazine that he became popular as a poet and the first book that he brought out in english was the madman his parables and poems which was completed in 1917 and later it was published in 1918 by alfred a knopf who went on to publish all his works later The Prophet as a text written by Khalil Gibran deals with love marriage children drinking joys sorrows friendship and every aspect related to life and his poems the speciality of his poems are that they are highly spiritual and philosophical in nature 
just like the poems of Blake and Romy, you can come across lot of similarities between Khalil Gibran, Blake and Romy. And another significance is that he fills his poems with lot of images and symbols. And that itself makes it explicit or makes explicit uh, the spirituality and the philosophical nature of his work. Now it's important for us to understand or take a look at the prophet. Uh, the text is important as the point that we are going to analyze today on children has been taken from it. So the prophet stitches together a number of poems that deal with various aspects of life. So the voice that we hear is that of the wise sage Al-Mustafa who had been living at Orphalese for the past 12 years and now it's time for him to leave to the Isle of his birth. So the narrative voice is that of Al-Mustafa who answers the questions raised by the people as per the request of the seeress Al-Mitra who comes out of the temple as Al-Mustafa is about to leave. The people have lot of doubts about the various aspects of life which the prophet takes some time to reply and he shares his views on 26 important subjects in life as I had mentioned before he speaks about sorrow, joy, he speaks about friendship and what not. There are lot of subjects of life about which he speaks and at the same time he also makes use of aphorisms and very poignant statements. Now what do you mean by aphorism? Now, aphorism is a statement that contains an observation and a general truth about it. And um, the prophet makes answers based on the questions asked by the people. And they ask questions about life. So, naturally, he answers uh, not just philosophically, not just uh, bringing in philosophies or ideologies. He rather speaks to them based on general facts and general truths about life. And we also find him bringing in variety of religious and cultural traditions in order to make universal statements, Khalil Gibran. So uh, it's actually Khalil Gibran's voice that we hear through this wise sage Al-Mustafa. So it is just a persona used by Al-Mustafa, it's just a persona used by Khalil Gibran in order to transact, in order to uh, convey his ideologies and his philosophies of life. And we find Khalil Gibran using a number of religious and cultural traditions in order to make universal statements. Now let's analyze the poem on children. I have already mentioned about the prophet. This particular poem on children has been taken from, this te from the text of the prophet written by Khalil Gibran. And I did say that the narrative voice is that of Al-Mustafa and as per the directions given by uh, Al-Mitra, the seeress who comes out of the temple while Al-Mustafa was about to leave Orphalese, um, the people make lot of queries. They raise a number of questions to Al-Mustafa to which he speaks uh, using aphorisms, images, symbols and also uh, using a lot of spirituality and uh, wit. Now let's look at uh, the poem on children. Let's take or uh, analyze the stanzas. And a woman who held a baby against her bosom said, Speak to us of children. So here we have perhaps a mother who was standing there along with her baby. Her, she holds the baby close to her bosom and she tells Al-Mustafa, this is the next topic that she wants uh, this wise sage to speak about. Speak to us of children. You need to speak to us of children. So incidentally, I'm reminded of uh, Francis Bacon. Uh, who wrote uh, about a number of subjects in a very objective manner. Uh, Francis Bacon, uh, he lived in the late 16th century and is still regarded as the master of impersonal essays. His uh, essays wrote, uh, he wrote essays about a variety of subjects, 
for instance of reading of studies of friendship of marriage so this is how the title also goes so he has written in an impersonal manner about a number of subjects that we actually should know about and he has given his views in a very objective manner he has observed or looked at these subjects from multiple angles in very objective ways so instantly i was reminded of francis bacon as i started reading on children so here too we find uh, al mustafa giving his perception about children